Um, I recently changed my uh, technique a little bit for seamless deliveries and I thought I would share because um, I wanted the ability to just do the matching of all the UV tiles and all of this stuff that I mentioned in, in this tutorial. Uh, I don't want to ever do this stuff again. You know, like all this seamless work for every, you know, for every, you know, livery would just be a pain. So I just decided, you know what, I'm going to do this once and then I'm going to have the, all the images that I drop in here are going to just be able to automatically be seamless uh, by basically just designing a system within a compositor, like After Effects or Nuke or, or Fusion. Um, and so that's what I'm showing here. And I'll show you the basics of how to do it in After Effects. Um, to understand these lines and the, and the UV shells and everything like that, you'll have to watch the first video on how to do the seamless liveries. Uh, so I'm going to jump right in here. So what I've got in After Effects is imported individual um, layers from the Photoshop uh, document that's that comes with you know, your iRacing uh, livery. These are individual, and that's the, the lines that I've drawn as a guide. And this is the mask layer for the delivery. So I've got a composition in After Effects that's a 2K res. Um, <clears throat> And then I just put it together and I have the space uh, UV grid image. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to same, same process as before in the Photoshop uh, library one. I'm going to go in and I'm going to mask off an area. The pen tool and select inside this UV seam because I want to bring it down here and I want all of this content that's underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing here. I'm going to grab a couple extra pixels just above the edge of the UV shell. Okay. And then I'm going to go up here. Oops, I should have had another one down there. Little point. This is already... There we go. Okay, so... Yeah, the problem is, is these should be cusps. I'm not, I don't really use After Effects much. But, um, okay, so I'm not going to do the whole, like, I'm not going to go all the way down here. I'm just going to show you the basic concept. So we want all these kind of pixels down here, right? Because this is going to all slide down. The most important area is just that it takes out the guesswork. Oops, we removed our point. So now that we've got a nice baseline, what we'll do, and you can see it already, once you close the path, it masks it off. So now what you want to do is you're just going to drag another copy of the, the UV grid down below that. The, the same content right underneath, except it's not masked. And what we're going to do is now we're going to move this down with the puppet tool. And it can be a little confusing, which it is. So what you can do is you can add a, a solid layer. It's a little black. We're going to make it semi-transparent anyway. Put it right below, and then just make the transparency uh, like, I don't know, like enough to see the grid lines and everything, but enough to differentiate your content to, like your masked content from the one uh, below. You want to align them, but you also have, you know, you're going to have no clue sort of where everything is uh, if you can't differentiate between them. Okay, so... Oops. So we're going to grab this point. I'm going to move it down here. This area is pretty complicated, so I'm, I'm just going to not screw around with that one too much. I want to align these points here. So we're going to move this down, right? And you can see where the seam is, so. so we're adding these, these puppet work, just like in the Photoshop uh, document tutorial. So we're getting these to line up, right? This is our guideline. You can see this guideline here, we can say, oh, okay, so that looks 
pretty good. Look at this one's kind of in the way that runs through the image. I'll draw another one here and we'll say, okay, well, one, two, three, four, five. Five. So kind of like that, right? This needs to come down. Yeah, and you can see the the image in the back there. So it's this is quite helpful to have that semi-transparent black. Okay. And um, yeah, we've got this over here. So. Add points as needed. Oh, see, I've got the wrong one here. That's why it's kind of squishy. You got you got a, two edges there. Okay. And uh, I'm not saying this isn't tedious. This is a really long process. It's just that when you see the end and the flexibility and the results, you'll basically realize, okay, this is why you do this. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sweat this part. Let's just look at the, the, the part at the left here. Okay, so, you know, we've done a decent job kind of eyeballing it here, thinking it's relatively aligned. Okay, let's hide this opacity uh, guide. Okay, so let's just do a test image. Um, turn off our guides. Um, and then you don't need to worry about the mask because that runs outside of the UV bounds anyway. So if you go to render our composition, you can say frame, file. We want to um, target. And this is the name of our uh, user uh, target that you replace on the PC. Okay, I'm going to render. Yes, I want to overwrite the file. And then if I look on my machine, right, that's over here. There you go. That's literally, let me show you the, bef the before so you can appreciate how good that looks. Turn off the, the. This is our edit layer, and I'll re-render. Okay. Place. Okay. And you can see it updates automatically when you replace the file. Look at how like that giant seam there. So. Let's uh, let's move this along, and you're thinking, oh, okay, great, you've got this UV image uh, that doesn't really help me much. I, I have a livery I want. Well, this is the beauty of this whole f this whole scheme is that you just select the image, and you go replace footage file, and then I'm going to grab. I'm going <coughs> to grab my image here, and bring it in, and you can see if I look down at the bottom here. I hide that layer. That's just done the work for me again. It's the same grid warp. Is there? Sorry, the puppet warp is there. Let's resize this. Save out my targa. You can see, like, this is a really complicated image, like. If I wanted to manually touch up these things in Photoshop, it would be very tedious. So, you know, for something this complex, you want this done for you. Like over and over and over. Place my image again. Check it out. Head over to the PC. You can see right on the Powell sticker there. It looks pretty good. You can just see a little bit there. 
but I mean, again, and you can swap back and forth between the UV and this is where it's like scripting comes in handy is you can just sort of swap things and, and you know, <clears throat> be a little bit smarter about your workflow. Um, and then, so now let's go back and then let's just take a look at, you know, you've got, because we, we did this puppet transform of content that we just sort of had this big area that we wanted, um, below the, the seam, um, we need to kind of get rid of that, uh, in different programs, you do it in different ways, uh, in after effects. You're going to just grab the original mask that you had. And we'll go and we'll, and we'll basically just drag this up in tubes. You want to grab each point, not the whole thing. Until it appears inside the shell. There, you know. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, you would have wanted to deal with this whole sort of portion of it, um, but this is just for the tutorial. So, I mean, and then the, the, the rest of the workflow is basically the same thing. You caught, you know, you're going to copy your image down to another layer below, mask it off, uh, and, and then try and get the next portion that goes down and, and further and where you, you know, you know that your joins are. So it's the exact same as the Photoshop. It's just you're doing it in a, a more um, flexible way that's that's you know, it's gonna just swap out content. 